Hello everyone, this is Sam Spate, and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about code style. Code style means the rules and guidelines that govern the way your code looks. Essentially, we're talking about formatting, and it's more important than you might realize. I'll demonstrate that with two examples. Here's the first example, the bad example. I'm going to pause for a moment, and I would recommend you pausing the video and taking a moment to look through the code and see if you can understand what's going on. Okay, so if you spent some time trying to work your way through this code, you might have figured out a couple things, but now consider the following example. Again, I'll pause for just a moment so you can read through the code. This time, it should be much easier to figure out what's going on. In fact, my guess is if you showed this code to someone who didn't understand how to program, they would still have a pretty good idea of what it was supposed to do. It's checking the player's health. If the health is less than or equal to zero, it's destroying the player. Then, if the lives are greater than zero, it's spawning a new player, and otherwise destroying that or eliminating that player. Those two examples should demonstrate the importance of developing and following your own coding style. And having a coding style is important even if you code by yourself. Let's say you want to ask for help on the forums. Someone else has to read your code. Let's say you want to hire a freelancer. Again, someone else may have to read your code. Let's say you want a freelance. You're going to have to write code that other people can read. Or let's say you want to find a partner to code with. They're going to have to read your code. And finally, and honestly, this is the biggest one, your future self. You may think you understand your code today, but three months or a year later, you probably will not. So we've talked about what code style is and why it's important to have good code style. Now let's go through some elements of what makes code style good. The primary thing that makes a code style good is that it is easy to understand. Ultimately, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no one true style that you must follow, but there are better or worse answers. You're striving for readability, readability through consistency. One thing I wanna add here is that while it is important to have a good code style, you don't have to develop it overnight. Certainly, I would strive for consistency in any single project, but in different projects, try different things. Try to find the thing that you like the most, pay attention to how other people code, look at their styles, copy what you like. Again, you're striving for something that works for you while also still being clean and easy to read for everyone else. Now let's talk about the basic elements that you'll wanna consider. They are indentation, white space, capitalization, naming, and comma. There are obviously much more. There are some very detailed style guides out there for code that you could look up if you're interested, but these will give you a good foundation and a good place to start. First, let's talk about indentation. I'm gonna go through two main styles. There are many more than this, and at the end of the slides, there'll be a link to the Wikipedia page that covers a bunch of them. But these are the two styles that I see most frequently. The first one, and the one that I use throughout this tutorial, is KNR. In KNR, you put the first bracket on the first line, then you indent, then you write your code, then if you have more code, you would put the bracket on that line, indent again, then you put the closing bracket on the same, at the same level of indentation as the code block that it forms. So bracket here, bracket here. In Allman, you put the first bracket without indenting underneath the line, the first line of the code block. Then you indent and write the code. Again, code, bracket, indent, more code. And then you put the closing bracket at the same level, just as in KNR. Again, these are just two styles. There's many more. If you want to look at some of them, I've linked to the Wikipedia page at the very end. Next up, we have white space. White space simply means putting spaces between characters. So here we have code with spaces, and here we have code without. Now, as I've said, there's no right or wrong answers, but there are better and worse answers, and this is one of those times where I think having space is better. Still, not everyone thinks that. But for me, this is easier to read than this, especially right here and right here. I struggle a little bit without those spaces. Next, we have capitalization. There's really two main types of capitalization. The first type is snake case. Snake case uses no uppercase letters. It's all lowercase, and you put an underscore between each word. So you can see variable, underscore name, another underscore variable, underscore name. Camel case is similar. It uses lowercase letters for the first word, and then it uses an uppercase letter for the first letter of each subsequent word. So you have variable, variable name, where N is capitalized, and then another variable name, where the V and the N are capitalized. Again, no right or wrong answers. I tend to use snake case, 
especially in GML, and most of the GML functions are also in snake case, so I think it helps your code be consistent there. But both are very common. Next, we have naming conventions. This is probably the most gray area. So all I'm really gonna say here is that you want to pick clear, readable names that are descriptive. You generally want to avoid abbreviations unless those abbreviations are extremely common. Again, you don't want to have to think about what your code means. You want to just be able to read your code. And with resources in GameMaker Studio 2, such as sprites or objects, it's fairly common to put a short abbreviation of that resource before the variable name. So for example, you have object player, sprite player, tile script, or sorry, tile set mountain, shader, font, script. Again, naming conventions, like I said, are the most gray area and probably have the most variance. But what you're striving for is readability. If you can read your code and other people can read your code easily, then you've got it. Last, but certainly not least, we'll talk about comments. For comments, we're gonna talk about three specific things. We're gonna talk about where you place them, the point of comments in general, and finally, some tips and tricks with comments. There are three main places to put comments. The first is before the code that you're commenting on. So right here, you've got the comment, then you've got the code. The second is after the code with a single space. So you've got the line, the comment, the line, the comment. The third place to put a comment is at the end of each line, but tabbed over so they all line up. I tend to use the first, so that's probably what you'll see throughout this tutorial, but I do like this one a lot as well. The main problem I have with this third form is it gets easy to let it fall out of use. As you change code, the indents get messed up and it doesn't look as nice unless you spend time maintaining it. One thing that's worth pointing out if you don't already know it is to write a comment in code, you use forward slash forward slash. Some other general recommendations with comments is that they should be informative, but not unnecessarily long. You shouldn't comment on very obvious things and you should comment less obvious things. For example, this first comment is completely unnecessary. Simply reading the code tells you the exact same information. However, this second comment is much more helpful. Saying macro debug true doesn't tell you a whole lot about what that code is supposed to do elsewhere in the project. This comment, however, makes it clear that the debug variable is something you can toggle on and off to run tests throughout the project. Finally, some tips and tricks for comments. One thing that's worth trying is writing your comments first. Write out your comments or write out what your code is supposed to do as comments in English and then go back through and add those lines in. This can be a great way of structuring your code and making sure you know what you want to do before you actually start doing it. Second, something I use all the time is Control K and Control Shift K. Control K will comment out all highlighted lines and Control Shift K will uncomment them. This can be incredibly useful for quickly commenting out whole blocks of code or uncommenting out whole blocks of code. Well, there's also an alternative way to do long comments, which is forward slash asterisk and then asterisk forward slash. Anything between those two, as with this example down there, is a comment. One last note, GML is a very flexible language. It allows you to type a lot of different things. However, just because it allows you to type something does not always mean you should take advantage of it. So everything up here is valid code. However, some of these things are easier to read. Personally, I think that this middle one is the easiest to read. Additionally, other programming languages are more strict. So getting into the habit of using parentheses and semicolons and brackets can help you in the long run. In summary then, you should be familiar with some basic conventions of code styling. You should experiment to find the ones that work for you, but at some point you wanna pick a basic style and be consistent, at least inside of a project. As always, the links on this slide will be below, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. That's it, thanks for watching.